মনে মনে মেলে দিলেম গানের সুরের এই ডানা মনে মনে তেপান্তরের পাথর পেরোই রূপ কথার পথ ভুলে যাই দূর পারে কোন চুপ কথা পারুল বনের চম পারে মোর হয় জানা মনে মনে সূর্য যখন হস্তে পড়ে ঢুলি মেঘে মেঘে আকাশ কুসুম তুলি সাত সাগরের ফেনায় ফেনায় মিশে যাই ভেসে দূর দিশে পুরীর দেশের বন্ধ দুয়ার দি August 24, 1690, Job Charnak landed at the site of three adjacent villages, trading in salt and silk, Sutanoti, Gobindapur, Dihi, Kolkata. He has written, I have ordered Captain Brooke to come up with a vessel and found the place in deplorable condition. Kolkata today, as it is, is not exactly deplorable. With the passage of time, the city has grown into a megapolis and received a whole lot of negative criticism. Robert Clive called it most wicked place in the universe. Churchill told his mother, I shall always be glad to have seen it for the reason that it will not be necessary for me to see it again. Rajiv Gandhi described Calcutta as a dying city. Author Dominique Lapierre lived in Calcutta for a while and coined the phrase City of Joy. But the fact remains that Calcutta, unlike many other big cities of India, has developed a rather quizzical character. The city occupied a very special place in British era as the capital of the country. Since early times, it has flaunted the presence of a huge number of creative people. Poet Rabindranath Tagore was born here. British rulers looked at his family with respect. Queen of England knew his grandfather, Prince Darkanath Tagore. He was an ace businessman and a reformer. Rather strangely, he ran a series of brothels in the city as a business proposition. Rabindranath wrote his first regular poetry in a house in Sutter Street. <laughs> কেমনে পুষ্যিল প্রাণের পর কেমনে পুষ্যিল গুহার আধারে প্রভাত পাখির গান না জানি কেন রে এত দিন পরে জাগিয়া উঠিল প্রাণ জাগিয়া উঠেছে প্রাণ ওরে উথলি উঠেছে বাড়ি ওরে প্রাণের বাসনা প্রাণের আবেগ রুধিয়া রাখিতে নারী a plaque was placed in poet's memory. How many Bengalis know about it? How many of us have noticed it at all? Over the years, the city has developed a surrealist character. Reality supersedes dream here. Dream outshines reality. Indian struggle for independence took shape in Calcutta. Mr. Shubhas Chandra Bose was a Calcutta. 
He sneaked out of the city one night in a car and landed eventually in Europe to stand in himself as a freedom fighter. Sisters and brothers of America. Swami Vivekananda returned glorious from the US. Horses to his carriage were set aside. Calcutans pulled the car physically all the way to the destination as a mark of respect. Warren Hastings held official meetings with East India Company in this room of St. John's Church. The site of the church was donated by Raja Navakrishna Dev of Shohavajar. The British built many churches here and allowed others to build their own here. There is a Portuguese church, Greek Orthodox church, Armenian church and many others. All these are active today. Almost anywhere in the city you can come across a God's place, big or small. From Nakhoda Masjid to Kalighat Temple, from the Parishnath Temple property to the tiny spots at roadside, God is omnipresent. Trams and streetcars were originally horse-drawn. This pollution-free public transport is dying today. A major tram depot has turned into a fancy cafe. If you visit the Maidan area, the largest open space in a city anywhere in India, you can see rows of Baroque chariots. Hire these for a joyride, if you may. To commemorate Queen's coronation, the foundation store of Victoria Memorial was laid in 1906. Mind you, mainly with donation from local babus at the site where a prison house was located earlier. The ferry that stands atop the main tomb here was imported from Italy. She plays a flute clearly ignoring the hubbubs of the city. Not in reality, yet, do we notice her at all? We also do not notice so much the site where Mother Teresa was buried. Our last remains in Mother House are hardly visited by locals. Average Calcuttans are engaged in a rat race.
The city is a place to live, earn money, shout slogans, break laws. Rabindranath Tagore is an icon indeed. He has become nothing more than the holy mascot of Bengali provincial vanity. His songs are taught in private houses and institutions. Every day of the month has a Tagore Swery somewhere in the town. People of Bengal did not organize a protest march when his Nobel Prize was stolen. Almost same is the case with Satyajit Roy. His films are not available except one or two. Bengali film lovers are non calent The body of the city is cosmetically cute. An owl is a nocturnal bird, yet it embellishes a premier highway. Moreover, the city has a whole lot of Jurassic materials like this huge rhinoceros. Culture centers like Academy of Fine Arts, Rabindra Shadon and Nandon are ever agog with activities. How much of it is meaningful is a disturbing question. Streets have garish message-bearing murals. The point is, how much does it impact life? Of course, the city has become beautiful. Culture crush also is undeniable here. Beyond all this, do we have the mind to improve our passion and longing for a beautiful social balance? Chitrakur Art Gallery is a private establishment and one of the oldest of its kind.
Listen to what the proprietor says about this precious place. We try to give importance to religion in our art gallery because we know that religion is the most important source of art. From the beginning, till since ancient times, art has been guided by religion. So we have a lot of religious paintings and we have had shows like 99 Names of Allah based on religion. And we have made a lot of documentaries with the help of Dr. Shankar Majumdar on religious subjects like Tarapit Temple, Bodh Gaya Temple, uh, Jagannath Puri Temple. This is a yogi inside the tree. And uh, this is near Shantiniketan, around 22 kilometers. And whoever is interested, we take him there as a tour. Uh, this gallery was established in 1984 by my father. In the beginning, there were no galleries in Kolkata at that time. So there was a very good response. There were a lot of artists who used to come here and a lot of art connoisseurs and they used to buy paintings. And uh, the art market was pure. It was not based on buying and selling. It was not like somebody buys a painting just to sell it. People liked painting, people appreciated it, discussed it. That time the newspapers were very active in Calcutta as far as art is concerned. They used to uh, cover all major art exhibitions and there were very good art critics who used to write very well about the art. Now the newspapers are not that much active as far as art is concerned. Not much art news comes. Even if it does come, it is biased. And for the last many years, there are five, six artists which are portrayed or exhibited only. And only when they are exhibited, people show interest and go there. But otherwise, there are many new shows which happen here. I have organized 99 Names of Allah show two times, but there was no response. Nobody understood the importance of important shows. Today is the day of brand name. Whoever has become a brand, he rules. There is much less interest in art in the city at the moment. We are still trying to have very interesting kinds of show. There was a show in London on, uh, in November on Tantra art, Tantra art made by British artists and uh, European artists. We had that show again here. We are trying to generate interest again in the young generation and we are trying to get art printed in a pure way in the newspapers. But very few people are taking interest. They want uh, an art gallery which is cultural, where they can come, talk about, discuss different things, listen to good music. Army band regales the visitors in Eco Park against the backdrop of a fake Taj Mahal. They often play cheap filmy songs. Just beside it is a tea garden. Growing tea in a city of high summer is a challenge. How many visitors notice it? Poverty, yes, is like a bee in the bonnet of the city. The poor old woman who looks for a pie at the entrance of a high-profile sweetmeat shop or the rickety vagabond at the traffic kiosk in front of Nandan cultural complex or even the kid duo at the gate of the fancy mall sharing chow mein and all these are real, very real, yet simply ignorable. If surrealism is ideas not ordinarily associated, if it is a reasonable coexistence of the real and the dreamy, Calcutta is a grand specimen. The moot point is the people. How do they manage to live in the middle of contradictions? How much is enjoyment? How much is pain? I've just heard that the food is good and 
you know, I've heard about the culture here and I just wanted to check it out. Food? Yes. Would you like food? Yes, I love food. <laughs> but food is quite hot in Canada. Yes, it is very spicy to me. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> yes, in small doses. It's a very exciting place and there's a lot going on, so I wanted to see it. Dogs, crows, cows, trees, spring, summer, cricket at the Eden Gardens, couples stationed here and there, everything is at the right place. Whatever happens, the city believes in itself. People of Calcutta has an amazing confidence quotient. Tenth-century Iranian historian and polymath Al Biruni visited Calcutta. He wrote, "This is a strange place. People here can talk for hours on anything without knowing much about it. No matter how we are." We are here with an indomitable element. 